Welcome. This is unit 18 of the expert track. After learning about economic tools, in this unit, you will learn about how ecosystem management can be mainstreamed into existing national policies, strategies, and projects related to disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. Here are our learning questions for this session. First, what are the key entry points for integrating EcoDRR and EBA in policies, programs, and projects? Second, what financial resources are available for mainstreaming EcoDRR and EBA? Third, what are the challenges for mainstreaming EcoDRR and EBA? Question number one. What are the key entry points for integrating EcoDRR in policies, programs, and plans? First, we need to ask, what is mainstreaming and how do we go about it? Mainstreaming is about integrating a less common approach into a more common one. In this case, we are referring to integrating ecosystem management into disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation to achieve sustainable and resilient development. The reasons for mainstreaming EcoDRR and EBA are to protect development gains, reduce underlying vulnerabilities to future disasters, and increase access to sectoral resources that can support such ecosystem-based activities. The first entry point is at the global policy level where organizations such as the Partnership for Environment and Disaster Risk Reduction, which is a global alliance of international organizations, NGOs, and universities are working with national governments to include EcoDRR and EPA into key international agreements. The second entry point are national policies, plans, and strategies. They can be environmental, disaster management, climate change, or development related. Examples include climate change adaptation plans, disaster management plans, national poverty reduction strategies, land use plans, and sectoral development policies. A third entry point for EcoDRR are development projects at all phases of a project cycle, from initial assessment, problem, and stakeholder analysis to project design and implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. For example, at the national level, EIAs, which are normally mandatory for most larger development projects, can be required to include a risk assessment component. Remember, we discussed this in Unit 14. Question number two. What financial resources are available for mainstreaming EcoDRR and EBA? First, national budgets. There are various national budgets that could be tapped into. These include disaster risk reduction budgets, calamity funds, national environmental funds, climate change funds, and risk transfer instruments. Here are some examples. Bangladesh has a local disaster risk reduction fund that enables communities to invest in vulnerability reduction. Mexico has a fund for the prevention of natural disasters, and a second one was established to ensure adequate funding for reconstruction after national calamities. But having a dedicated national disaster risk reduction budget is still uncommon. What is more common is to use the large influx of post-disaster funds to finance prevention projects, including EcoDRR. For example, the 2011 National Greening Program was created in the Philippines in the aftermath of Hurricane Haiyan. It seeks to grow 1.5 billion trees nationwide. The goal is to mitigate climate change, reduce poverty and protect communities and coastal ecosystems from strong waves and soil erosion. Question number three. What are the challenges for mainstreaming EcoDRR and EBA? 
In terms of funding, we should note that although there are different national budgets that could technically be used for ECODRR and EBA, there are also many challenges of tapping into these sources. These include competing priorities, long return investment versus short term election cycles, difficulties in measuring impacts of disaster risk reduction, no specific budgets for ECODRR and EBA measures. Other challenges include lack of political will for longer term solutions, limited expertise on ECODRR and EBA, and constrained institutional mandates of institutions to address cross sectoral approaches such as ECODRR. As mentioned before, there is often a preference for engineering or gray infrastructure approaches. So, to wrap up, mainstreaming ECODRR and EPA requires not only balancing between economic and environmental interests, but also between stakeholders' competing interests. These challenges are beyond the capacity of any group or institution to address single-handedly. Promoting effective participation by all stakeholders requires approaches that are multi-sectoral. Mainstreaming ECODRR and EBA in development should therefore be pursued at different levels, involving different actors and sectors. This concludes Unit 18. Please stay tuned for Unit 19 on Operationalizing Resilience which will give hands-on experience and lots of information that will be useful for your final assignment.